Old English or Anglo-Saxon is the earliest historical form of the English language, spoken in England and southern and eastern Scotland in the early Middle Ages. It was brought to Great Britain by Anglo-Saxon settlers probably in the mid-5th century, and the first Old English literary works date from the mid-7th century. After the Norman conquest of 1066, English was replaced for a time as the language of the upper classes by Anglo-Norman, a relative of French, and Old English developed into the next historical form of English, known as Middle English. Old English developed from a set of Anglo-Frisian or North Sea Germanic dialects originally spoken by Germanic tribes traditionally known as the Angles, Saxons, and Jutes. As the Anglo-Saxons became dominant in England, their language replaced the languages of Roman Britain, Common Britonic, a Celtic language, and Latin, brought to Britain by Roman invasion. Old English had four main dialects, associated with particular Anglo-Saxon kingdoms. Mercian, Northumbrian, Kentish and West Saxon. It was West Saxon that formed the basis for the literary standard of the later Old English period, although the dominant forms of Middle and Modern English would develop mainly from Mercian. The speech of eastern and northern parts of England was subject to strong Old Norse influence due to Scandinavian rule and settlement beginning in the 9th century. Old English is one of the West Germanic languages, and its closest relatives are Old Frisian and Old Saxon. Like other Old Germanic languages, it is very different from Modern English and difficult for Modern English speakers to understand without study. Old English grammar is quite similar to that of Modern German. Nouns, adjectives, pronouns, and verbs have many inflectional endings and forms, and word order is much freer. The oldest of Old English inscriptions were written using a runic system, but from about the 9th century this was replaced by a version of the Latin alphabet. History Old English was not static, and its usage covered a period of 700 years from the Anglo-Saxon settlement of Britain in the 5th century to the late 11th century, sometime after the Norman invasion. Old English is a West Germanic language, developing out of Ingvionic dialects from the 5th century. It came to be spoken over most of the territory of the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms which became the Kingdom of England. This included most of present-day England, as well as part of what is now southeastern Scotland which for several centuries belonged to the Anglo-Saxon Kingdom of Northumbria. Other parts of the island, Wales and most of Scotland, continued to use Celtic languages, except in the areas of Scandinavian settlements where Old Norse was spoken. Celtic speech also remained established in certain parts of England. Medieval Cornish was spoken all over Cornwall and in adjacent parts of Devon, while Cumbric survived perhaps to the 12th century in parts of Cumbria, and Welsh may have been spoken on the English side of the Anglo-Welsh border. Norse was also widely spoken in the parts of England which fell under Danish law. Anglo-Saxon literacy developed after Christianization in the late 7th century. The oldest surviving text of Old English literature is Sedman's Hymn, composed between 658 and 680. There is a limited corpus of runic inscriptions from the 5th to 7th centuries, but the oldest coherent runic texts date to the 8th century. The Old English Latin alphabet was introduced around the 9th century with the unification of the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms by Alfred the Great in the later 9th century. The language of government in literature became standardized around the West Saxon dialect. Alfred advocated education in English alongside Latin, and had many works translated into the English language, some of them, such as Pope Gregory I's treatise Pastoral Cur, appear to have been translated by Alfred himself.
a later literary standard dating from the later 10th century, arose under the influence of Bishop Ethelwold of Winchester, and was followed by such writers as the prolific Alfred of Ensham. This form of the language is known as the Winchester Standard, or more commonly as Late West Saxon. It is considered to represent the classical form of Old English. It retained its position of prestige until the time of the Norman Conquest, after which English ceased for a time to be of importance as a literary language. The history of Old English can be subdivided into prehistoric Old English. For this period, Old English is mostly a reconstructed language as no literary witnesses survive. This language, or block of languages, spoken by the Angles, Saxons, and Jutes, and predating documented Old English or Anglo-Saxon, has also been called Primitive Old English. Early Old English, the period of the oldest manuscript traditions, with authors such as Cadman, Bede, Cinewulf and Aldhelm. Late Old English the final stage of the language leading up to the Norman conquest of England and the subsequent transition to early Middle English. The Old English period is followed by Middle English, Early Modern English and finally Modern English. Dialects Old English should not be regarded as a single monolithic entity, just as Modern English is also not monolithic. It emerged over time out of the many dialects and languages of the colonizing tribes and it is perhaps only towards the later Anglo-Saxon period that these can be considered to have constituted a single national language. Even then, Old English continued to exhibit much local and regional variation, remnants of which remain in modern English dialects. The four main dialectal forms of Old English were Mercian, Northumbrian, Kentish, and West Saxon. Mercian and Northumbrian are together referred to as Anglian. Each of these four dialects was associated with an independent kingdom on the island. Of these, Northumbria south of the Tyne, and most of Mercia, were overrun by the Vikings during the 9th century. The portion of Mercia that was successfully defended, and all of Kent, were then integrated into Wessex under Alfred the Great. From that time on, the West Saxon dialect became standardized as the language of government, and as the basis for the many works of literature and religious materials produced or translated from Latin in that period. The later literary standard known as Late West Saxon, although centered in the same region of the country, appears not to have been directly descended from Alfred's early West Saxon. For example, the former diphthong IY tended to become monothongized to I in EWS but to Y in LWS. Due to the centralization of power and the Viking invasions, there is relatively little written record of the non-Wessex dialect after Alfred's unification. Some Mercian texts continued to be written, however, and the influence of Mercian is apparent in some of the translations produced under Alfred's program, many of which were produced by Mercian scholars. Other dialects certainly continue to be spoken, as is evidenced by the continued variation between their successes in Middle and Modern English. In fact, what would become the standard forms of Middle English and of Modern English are descended from Mercian rather than West Saxon. While Scots developed from the Northumbrian dialect, it was once claimed that, owing to its position at the heart of the Kingdom of Wessex, the relics of Anglo-Saxon accent, Idiom and vocabulary were best preserved in the dialect of Somerset. For details of the sound differences between the dialects, see Phonological History of Old English. Influence of Other Languages The language of the Anglo-Saxon settlers appears not to have been significantly affected by the native British Celtic languages which it largely displaced. The number of Celtic loanwords introduced into the language is very small. However, various suggestions have been made concerning possible influence that Celtic may have had on developments in English syntax in the post-Old English period. 
such as the regular progressive construction and analytic word order. Old English contained a certain number of loanwords from Latin, which was the scholarly and diplomatic lingua franca of Western Europe. It is sometimes possible to give approximate dates for the borrowing of individual Latin words based on which patterns of sound change they have undergone. Some Latin words had already been borrowed into the Germanic languages before the ancestral Angles and Saxons left continental Europe for Britain. More entered the language when the Anglo-Saxons were converted to Christianity and Latin-speaking priests became influential. It was also through Irish Christian missionaries that the Latin alphabet was introduced and adapted for the writing of Old English replacing the earlier runic system. Nonetheless, the largest transfer of Latin-based words into English occurred after the Norman conquest of 1066, and thus in the Middle English rather than the Old English period. Another source of loan words was Old Norse, which came into contact with Old English via the Scandinavian rulers and settlers in the Dane law from the late 9th century. Enduring the rule of Cnut and other Danish kings in the early 11th century, many place names in eastern and northern England are of Scandinavian origin. Norse borrowings are relatively rare in Old English literature, being mostly terms relating to government and administration. The literary standard, however, was based on the West Saxon dialect. Away from the main area of Scandinavian influence, the impact of Norse may have been greater in the Eastern and Northern dialects, certainly in Middle English texts, which are more often based on Eastern dialects, a strong Norse influence becomes apparent. Modern English contains a great many, often everyday, words that were borrowed from Old Norse and the grammatical simplification that occurred after the Old English period is also often attributed partly to Norse influence. Phonology The inventory of classical Old English surface phones, as usually reconstructed, is as follows. The sounds enclosed in parentheses in the chart above are not considered to be phonemes. D is an allophone of J, occurring after N and when germinated. N is an allophone of N, occurring before K and V, TH, Z, a voiced allophones of F, theta, S, respectively, occurring between vowels or voiced consonants. C, X, are allophones of H, occurring in coda position after front and back vowels respectively is an allophone of occurring after a vowel and, at an earlier stage of the language, in the syllable onset. The voiceless sonorants L, N, R are analyzed as realizing the sequences H, W, H, L, H, N, our. The above system is largely similar to that of modern English, except that C, X, L, N, R have generally been lost while the voice affricate and fricatives have become independent phonemes, as has n. The mid-front rounded vowels o had merged into unrounded e before the late West Saxon period. During the 11th century such vowels arose again, as monothongizations of the diphthongs eo, but quickly merged again with e in most dialects. The exact pronunciation of the West Saxon close diphthongs is disputed. It may have been iy or ie. Other dialects may have had different systems of diphthongs. For example, Anglian dialects retained u, which had merged with eo in West Saxon. For more on dialectal differences, see Phonological History of Old English. Sound changes Some of the principal sound changes occurring in the prehistory and history of Old English were the following. Fronting of two, a, except when nasalized or followed by a nasal consonant, partly reversed in certain positions by later, a restoration, or retraction, monothongization of the diphthong, i, and modification of remaining diphthongs to the height harmonic type. Diphthongization of long and short front vowels in certain positions. Palatalization of elas k, s, k, 2, t, d, j, in certain front vowel environments. The process known as I mutation. Loss of certain weak vowels in word final and medial positions, and of medial j, reduction of remaining unstressed vowels.
dithongization of certain vowels before certain consonants when preceding a back vowel, loss of h between vowels or between a voice consonant and a vowel, with lengthening of the preceding vowel, collapse of two consecutive vowels into a single vowel, palatal umlaut, which has given forms such as six. For more details of these processes, see the main article, linked above. For sound changes before and after the Old English period, see Phonological History of English. Grammar. Morphology Unlike modern English, Old English is a language rich in morphological diversity. It maintains several distinct cases. The nominative, accusative, genitive, dative and instrumental. The only remnants of this system in modern English are in the forms of a few pronouns and in the possessive ending, s, which derives from the old genitive ending s. In Old English, however, nouns in the modifying words take appropriate endings depending on their case. The modern English plural ending s derives from the Old English as but the latter applied only to strong masculine nouns in the nominative and accusative cases. Different plural endings were used in other instances. Besides singular and plural, the first and second person personal pronouns also retained dual forms, meaning we, you. Old English nouns had grammatical gender, a feature absent in modern English, which uses only natural gender. For example, the words son, mona and wif were respectively feminine, masculine and neuter. This is reflected, among other things in the form of the definite article used with these nouns. Co son, shame owner, that wif. Pronoun usage could reflect either natural or grammatical gender, when those conflicted. The definite article she and its various forms could serve both as a definite article and a demonstrative adjective. Another demonstrative was these. These words, like other adjectives, inflected for gender, number and case. Adjectives had both strong and weak sets of endings, the weak ones being used when the definite or possessive determiner was also present. The form of the verb varies with person, number, tense, and mood. Old English also sometimes uses compound constructions to express other verbal aspects. The future and the passive voice, in these we see the beginnings of the compound tenses of modern English. Old English verbs include strong verbs, which form the past tense by altering the root vowel, and weak verbs, which use a suffix such as de. Many modern English irregular verbs derive from Old English strong verbs, while the regular past ending e derives from the weak verb suffixes. Syntax Old English syntax was similar in many ways to that of modern English. However, there were some important differences. Some were simply consequences of the greater level of nominal and verbal inflection, which meant that word order was generally freer. In addition, the default word order was more like modern German than modern English, with verb second order in main clauses, and verb final in subordinate clauses. There was no due support in questions and negatives. Questions were usually formed by inverting subject and finite verb, and negatives by placing knee before the finite verb. Regardless of what the verb was, multiple negatives could stack up in a sentence, and intensified each other. Sentences with subordinate clauses of the type when x, y did not use a wh type conjunction, but rather used a th type correlative conjunction such as ta, otherwise meaning then. The wh words were used only as interrogatives and as indefinite pronouns. Similarly, wh forms were not used as relative pronouns. Instead, the indeclinable word da was used, often preceded by the appropriate form of the article, demonstrative she.